Hey guys. guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about 10 things that we've learned in our 10 years of marriage. And while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe. subscribe. So babe, we recently celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary. I can't believe it. I feel like 10 years went by so fast. And when they say that you're going to learn and grow together, they weren't lying to you. They weren't lying to us. So whether you've been married for 10 years, dating for 10 months, or engaged, recently married, this video is for you. So without further ado, babe, do you want to start us off? What's something that you've learned in these 10 years of marriage? <sighs> well, all right. In these 10 years of marriage, there's been a lot of lessons. There's been a lot of things I've picked up. But I guess I'm going to start strong on this one. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, marriage is hard, you know, you're going to deal with a lot of problems. But they don't necessarily tell you why those problems come about. In our case, a lot of the problems that we've had in our marriage was because we love each other so much. It's sort of a weird problem where you're used to hearing people saying, oh, my marriage has a problem because of an affair or my marriage has problems because we fell out of love or you know that we, we don't we don't feel the same about each other you are loving someone so much right that it causes a lot of misunderstandings a lot of miscommunications cross wires because why maybe we have different love styles and for instance in my case I'm naturally a protector you know I will always try and protect my wife, you know, I'm going to protect my children, but sometimes that can be miscommunicated to my wife as being overbearing and overprotective. And in some cases, she's right. And so sometimes I have to really reel it back in, understand, okay, yes, I'm doing this out of love because I love my wife, but sometimes it's coming out, coming out a little too harsh or too strict or too overbearing. So it's not that you know, loving each other or loving your spouse is going to cause a problem. You don't want to make it sound like that. It's just that sometimes when you love hard, you may come off rough or the wrong way. So Shaheen, I love that he's protective. I love that he's a carer. I love that he wants to be the man and protect his family. But sometimes it could come off the wrong way or rough. And it's like, dude calm down i just sneezed i'm not gonna die like i i'm okay you know and they say that respectfully and rightfully so we've gone through some life-threatening circumstances that i could understand why he's so intense but at the same time we are people of faith we have faith you know we um i work hard to be healthy and it's like sometimes like chill out like it's okay you know so that's what I understand when you're like, you love someone so much, sometimes it could be intense how you're coming across. So, you know, some people uh, love it and some people would easily learn that there is a style that speaks higher volume to an individual. Your love language is gonna have a lot to do with that. All right, so that was point one. So, <laughs> all right, your turn. So what's one thing that you've learned in these 10 years of marriage? Teamwork makes the housework. All right. So while I believe that, you know, the woman could, you know, be home, take care of the kids, those traditional roles and the husband goes to work. But nowadays in today's society, you know, the men and women share similar what used to be called like the gender roles, like typical gender roles, especially if both the husband and the wife work and this happens to be Shaheen's and mine's situation a challenge I faced when I was recently married and watch out for this is that I wanted to be the best wife ever like I'm wife of the year you know like I wanted to be the best wife and fit all these gender roles when the reality was that I was trying to pressure myself to fit into this mold when I was also a working wife and it's no like hit on Shaheen, you know what I'm saying? It's just, we met, we were, you know, dating, we were both working, we were both in school, and then we started working more, like going from part-time to full-time, right? So, catch my drift. But when we got married, I we become full-time employees, and we are making life work together. Shaheen and I, we're working like a team, we're working together to be able to get our home and build you know on the dreams that we have and the goals and the visions but that comes with 
the reality of having to work. Nowadays, it could be challenging to have a one income household. Now in, in today's society, we're keeping it real 100. Yes, I'm YouTubers, we're YouTubers, but the truth is like, we're not paid doing this yet. You know, hopefully soon I'll be monetized in Jesus name. However, it's, it's challenging to fit a mold of a gender role when you also have to work as a woman. I'm not home all day, I'm at work all day. So Shaheen and I, the same way we split work, the same way we've learned to tag team in-house, you know, uh, needs. So it's very challenging, don't pressure yourself, especially if you both work, yes, take care of your man. Man, yes, take care of your wife. I love to cook, I love to feed my husband. I love to, you know, clean his clothes and I love to take care of him and all this stuff. But he also understands that I'm getting home at 5.30 or 6 o'clock or later than that, especially if we have some more to go after work. So it could be unrealistic for me to do everything I was trying to do during the day at 8 p.m. at night, you see? So we work, I make dinner, he'll wash. You know, he'll cut the, he'll be cutting the grass and I'll be cutting the bushes on a ladder trimming. And that's okay. You know, and someone may look and be like, oh my God, <coughs> you're trimming trees and whatever. I'm like, heck yeah, I'm going in with him, you know, because we're a team. So that's something I learned that we're going to both have to step up to the plate and make your house work. You're a team. So if you, if you want to focus on gender roles, that's great, but it, it's not fitting for every household and that's okay, you see? As long as I'm doing my responsibilities as a woman, biblically speaking, I could also help him with other things and he could also help me with other things. Now, your turn, go ahead, hit us. <laughs> all right, all right, so number three, right? So a lot of times we hear and we've learned of, you know, the two become one. And a lot of times in our mindset, that means that, oh, we're going to have the same interests, we're gonna have the same likes, we're gonna have the same way of thinking. In marriage, we learn real quick that that is not the case. Um, in marriage, these 10 years, I've learned to appreciate the differences that my wife has and, you know, that complement, you know, the differences that I am. You know, at first, you know, especially with my, my way of thinking, you know, like, oh, why does she think that way? Oh, why does she say things like that? Oh, why does she do things this way? And of course, rightfully so, it used to drive me crazy. And it's because I didn't appreciate how different she was and maybe the reason why she did things. And so with the 10 years of marriage, I've learned to really, you know, take a step back and observe and try and try and understand who is my wife as a person. Why does she make the decisions that she does? Why does she think the way that she does? Why does she say things certain ways? You know, instead of trying to force her to fit a mold, I, I take a step back and I appreciate who God made her to be. And so, Amen, hallelujah. He, appreciating me for who God made me to be and the woman the Lord is forming in me and I could appreciate him for the man that God wants him to be and intended him to be not the man I want to make him to be because if if you have to remake someone and the other person wants to remake the other person it's like why did you propose to each other you know why did you propose why did you marry each other if you feel you have to create a whole new person yes there's room for improvements and we could work on, you know, certain things that maybe we don't like on each other. We could adjust, you know, marriage is compromise. And I guess this is my point number four. Marriage has a lot of compromise and growth. So yeah, guys, sorry, it cut off. I'm using a different camera now. But like what I was saying was, you know, in marriage, there's a lot of compromise and you have to learn how each other is growing because maybe in the beginning of our marriage shaheen and i like something a certain way and now 10 years down the line he can't eat that anymore or i can't do this anymore he can't do that anymore and it's like oh but this isn't how it was but we are learning how we are evolving as two human beings as two adults and when you hear that like if you're about to get married you're engaged like recently engaged or newlyweds and you hear people tell you this it's so facts like they're not being negative towards you like i remember people telling us before we got married like things are gonna change this and i'm like i don't even hear that ne no negativity but it's not that things are gonna change maybe not in a negative way it's just you have to truly 
know and be willing to work on yourself and be willing to be patient with your partner. And it goes both ways, vice versa. Because if not, it's gonna be hell. It's gonna be a lot of discord. But if you know, oh, I'm gonna leave my next point. So I'm gonna leave it at that. That's That was my, my point. So compromise and willing to understand each other as we're evolving and growing. So that was my point. And then what's your next point? <laughs> What's another thing that you learned, babe, in these 10 years of marriage? It, I feel like it's been so long, but it also went by so fast. Don't you agree? Yeah. So with marriage, I think the fifth point, right? So the fifth point I would say is that um, marriage takes a lot of maintenance. Um, and just like, you know, like any car or vehicle, that if you don't maintain, it's going to fall apart. If you don't do the oil change, you don't rotate the tires it's gonna fall apart and marriage is the same way you have to do a lot of TLC and maintenance and what does that look like you have to be intentional so we have to be intentional with um, finding time to go on dates you have to find uh, intentional you know not to be a workaholic and never take a vacation that was something that you know we would be really bad at you know we would work for 11 months out of the year straight wait till christmas to try and do something for you know a few days and then go right back to it and it's not healthy um it's important to to find that balance you know in your marriage where you're able to sew into one another and not you're not just constantly draining it one another because before you know it you know you're falling apart and you're not like oh why i thought everything was okay but it's because you haven't done any maintenance just like our brains our brains you know function with dopamine right we have to have that hit of sugar or our coffee and the we, feel good we get that feel good boost you know every so often marriage is the same way if you don't have that feel good boost consistently then it's just going to keep depleting and depleting and depleting and depleting until there's nothing left so always try and be an intentional with your marriage you know sow seeds into your partner um even in and that doesn't have to look like big gifts or big vacations it could be a daily thing so words of encouragement into your partner tell your partner something that you like that they did that day or you know send them you know just a word a bible verse or encouragement you know be intentional to sow positivity whatever that may look like that may be words of encouragement they may be a physical gift they may be time spent in a vacation just make be intentional to do that so that's a really good one babe quality time guys quality time over everything because life is going to come and go but those moments are going to be crucial okay so that brings me to my next point it's in connectivity to Shaheen's point about quality time, I'm gonna say, enjoy the moments. Because you can say, oh yeah, we have a whole lifetime to enjoy, absolutely. But if you are just focused on the daily grind, the daily routine, it's good to focus on your goals. I do speak about goals and habits, if you've seen my uh, January videos. And you could literally innovate yourselves as a couple, as a team, and to grow, right? However, in the midst of all that, in the midst of the work, enjoy the moments. Take time to pause. It's okay to pause. You can pause to play. It's okay. Pause doesn't mean stop. And I love talking about that. Pause doesn't mean you're slacking. Pause doesn't mean you're lazy or you're not motivated. But pause means that you could take a breather and you could enjoy those moments. Something funny happened today. Oh my gosh, let me share about my day. Or I don't want to talk about work, but I want to, you know, we're going to watch funny videos or whatever brings you both joy. It could be in the mundane. It could just be in just natural things that happen that you could really enjoy and embrace that. Shaheen spoke about going on date nights. Be intentional with one another. But when you're on date night, are you in a rush to get back because you have to go to work the next day? Are you like just so tired or are you just like, oh uh, we could just stay home or are you gonna enjoy those moments so that's why i say embrace the moments and learn to pause it's okay to pause and i know that that's been very edifying in our marriage because it does get hectic it does become challenging sometimes but it's about what you do about these moments you know and it doesn't have to be expensive date night could be 
hey, we're gonna go on a picnic, right? Or, hey, we're gonna go to the movies and dinner. You see, it doesn't have to be nothing so expensive. Oh, you don't have a budget? Go on a walk, you know, go, go to the park. Get out of the house, you know, just do something that's gonna get you guys to look at each other and talk. All right, point seven. So point seven is do not minimize the importance of prayer in your marriage. Prayer is key. Prayer is like the, how can I, in, in our marriage, prayer, prayer is like, I don't know, it's so much things. Prayer is like a shield for us. Prayer is like fuel for us. Prayer is like therapy for us in marriage. It, prayer does so much for your marriage. How you stay connected to God and he's the source. He's He is the answer. If you don't know what prayer is, it's talking to Jesus, talking to God. So when you know you put Jesus at the center, that's... I love that you said that, babe. So prayer is absolutely key. If you don't pray and you're married, you're doing your pray, your marriage a huge disservice because there's so many aspects, so many things that happen within a marriage that is not physical, is not emotional, is actually spiritual. And you have to be spiritually inclined and connected to God to recognize these things and to know when, okay, I need to pray about this subject or I need to pray and cover my spouse in this area. There's a lot of key moments and there's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of heartaches, you know, a lot of things that you can avoid just by having a prayer life. When you pray, you need to sort of have it in your mind that you're having a conversation. You have, you're having a reverent conversation with the Almighty God. So whatever you're talking, you're talking with reverence, with respect, with humbleness, right? But it's also a conversation. He's the one that formed you. He knows your heart. He knows the, the, the things in your heart and your mind. And especially when it comes to your marriage, you know, those requests, you know, throw that passion in there. Throw that heart in there when you're praying. If you're feeling some certain type of way, about something that happened with your marriage or about your spouse, let God feel that with the way that you communicate that to him. You know, don't hold back. Don't be like, okay, after Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, like God, he's a real God. And so be a real person to God. Show God that you're real yourself. You know, it works both ways. So that's all I'm saying. That's a good point, babe. Prayer is key. Prayer changes things because Jesus is real and he changes things. And when you keep God at the center of your marriage, it's all things are possible. You stay united, he helps you through. Is marriage perfect? No, we're not saying that because we're Christian and we have faith in Jesus and we believe in Jesus, that marriage is perfect. No, sometimes it's okay to go through things so you can learn and grow together. So the eighth thing that we learned in these 10 years of marriage, and I'm sorry to break it to you, but marriage is not a fairy tale, okay? Disney lied to us, cartoons lied to us. But you know what I observed and I was thinking about this recently? Lied to you. What do you mean? Women have, usually are the ones with the fantasy of... Yeah, but that's what I'm getting to. Mm -hmm. You know what I realized mm -hmm. recently? What? That even in those Disney, Pixar, like storybook fairy tales per se, where at the end of the chapter, like the last chapter, the last page it says, and they lived, say with me, happily, happily ever, ever after. after. If you go back a few pages, <laughs> if you go back a few pages, they went through some chaos or drama to get to that happily ever after. So even in those Disney fairy tales or storybook fairy tales, there's still some you know, challenges that they had to face. If you really think about it. I mean, there's a dragon that the, they have to rescue the princess from. You know, she had to kiss a few frogs, you know, or there was like controversy, or there was adversity. So fairy tales also have their challenges. What makes it a fairy tale is that love story that 
that you're creating that unity, that victory aspect of your love that you can remain as a united front to work through conflict and adversity and ultimately stay together and ultimately live happily ever after because God does promise us joy. God does promise us, you know, um, the gift of, of life and and in the book of Joel, he says, you you know, you're going to gain back those years that you lost. And, you know, he also speaks to us about you, uh, there was sorrow, what is it, at night, but joy comes in the morning. See, so God does promise and, uh, and help us and allow that joy and that happily ever after in our life. And also, so I just want to give you hope, like God will restore you. God will help you both in your marriage, but you have to truly believe and trust and be intentional to put in the work i love something that our pastors taught us was the grass is not greener on the other side the grass is greener where you water it and by watering that means you're being intentional to see those areas those patchy areas right in the lawn or those patchy areas in your marriage that need an extra tlc care help extra loving over here to make the grass greener, to make your marriage stronger, healthier, beautiful, abundant, you see? So, that. That was number eight. <laughs> so, uh, number nine, I will say, the number nine thing that I've learned in these 10 years of marriage mm -hmm. is that uh, marriage is sacrificial. Um, there's a lot of compromise and sacrifice um, that comes along with marriage and I feel like you become your best you Become the best version of being a husband or a best version of becoming a wife when you are able to put yourself aside and Focus on the other person and it works when the other person does it as well. It can't be one-sided It has to be something that's reciprocated uh, otherwise, it becomes draining and um, and um, disabling, if that's the word. So, marriage is sacrifice. There are going to be times where you're going to have to put aside, you know, something that you want to do, or you know, something that you want to get, you know, to be able to push up and uplift your partner. And you know, that's just marriage. And it says that you know, my body is not my own, but it belongs to my wife and her body. Does it belong to her, but belongs to me. So what that means is we're supposed to take care of each other. Mm -hmm. so. That's really good, babe. And the last thing I want to say is marriage is fun. Marriage is fun. You have a forever best friend, a life partner that you can go on trips together. You could enjoy your home together, build a family. You know, the Lord um, calls us to be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply what he gives you in your hands, you know? You're going to be fruitful and multiply your, oh, maybe you're going to, your family's going to start a business. You could be fruitful and multiply with each other and be fruitful and have children. Extend your family, extend your tent, build your lives together. And in the midst of that, enjoying life, you know, going back to like those enjoy the moments and intentions part of it, you get to go on trips together, vacation, at home. You know, you could do so many like things because now you have someone saying, hey, I'm in it with you. And they're like, I'm in it with you. What are we going to do? What are we going to plan? What are we going to work together for a church or for our purpose in life? You see, you have a confidence. You have that best friend. And that makes marriage so much more better and worth it. And I just want to break the stigma where people say, and I don't mean no offense, respectfully saying, but I want to break this stigma that says that marriage is just a paper. Marriage is not just a paper, okay? Marriage is real. It's a covenant. It's mandated, right, by God. And it's not just a paper. And it's not just a negative thing like, oh, you're going to get married and your life's going to be doomed for life now. Now you're stuck. Um, no, actually, it's a fresh, brand new chapter and it could be so much Fun and lively and life just gets better when you marry your best friend so 
I want to add something to that. Ooh, a bonus! Oh, this is a bonus. And this is a message directly, uh, it's not only for the men, but it's more geared towards the men. Guys, I want you to realize this secret. Your wife is your incubator, right? God designed women to receive a seed and give birth. <laughs> you know, they take what you have as a man, they nourish it, and they multiply it. They give that life. So the same way within your marriage, your wife, if you sow love into your wife, she's gonna take that love, she's gonna incubate it, and she's gonna give birth to that love. And it works negatively as well. If you give your wife poison, she's gonna take that poison, incubate it, and she's gonna give birth of that poison back to you. And so you really need to be intentional about what you sow into your wife. So sow love, so respect, so so joy, so light, peace, and she's gonna take that, she's gonna incubate it, and she's gonna give life to it back to you. So just a little nugget. Awesome. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe. Yes, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when we post another video. Until next time, guys, stay well, be blessed, and God bless you guys.